Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, welcome. My name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today I'm going to be doing another dog trainer reacts video and this time instead of reacting to a video here on YouTube, we're actually going to be reacting to a news article that I woke up to this morning. This article announces that President Biden's dogs Champ and Major have been sent home to Delaware in response to a aggressive biting incident from his younger dog, Major. Now this video obviously talks about politics because it is about our current president, but that's kind of the extent of the political aspect that we're gonna be talking about today. This is not going to be talking about things that our current president is doing. It's not going to be talking about past presidents. I simply want to use this as an example to give you guys some tips and tricks and some insight. If you or a, someone you know has a dog that's showing aggressive tendencies and how you can kind of pinpoint different warning signs and then what to do about it afterwards. In this particular case, Major is a German Shepherd just like Biden's older dog, Champ. Unlike Champ, Major is a rescue dog. He's actually the White House's very first rescue dog, which was super, super exciting when he came into the White House. And he's also very new to this whole government politics White House living thing. From what I could tell, Biden got Major when he was about one and a half, and Major is now three, so he is still a relatively young dog. When we're looking at bigger dogs, they typically don't mature until about two, two and a half years old. So for up until very recently, this dog is what we consider a young, active, almost puppy-like dog. This is a very stark contrast to Biden's older dog, Champ, who is 14 years old. Again, a German Shepherd, large dog, and at 14, most large dogs are having significant joint problems, arthritis, they've definitely slowed down and they're ready to retire. Furthermore, Champ has been to the White House before. This is not his first time. He is relatively pretty used to the workings of the White House, having people come and go, security detail, everything involved with that, because he did accompany Biden to the White House during his vice presidency in the Obama administration. So Jill Biden has described her two dogs as being very opposite. Unsurprisingly, Champ is described as very mellow, kind of towards the end of his life, slowing down, and Major is described as energetic and active, and this is easily reflected in their ages and where they are in different parts of their lives. It is also important to note that Jill Biden has gone on record of saying that Major has exhibited aggressive behaviors like barking, jumping, and lunging at the White House staff. Ultimately, the last straw was a bite to a security member that sent the dogs back home to Delaware, where it sounds like Jill Biden goes back and forth and they also have a pet sitter. So let's talk about the specifics of this situation, how things could have been avoided, how things could have been differently. Obviously, I was not there. I do not know the behaviors leading up to the incident. I don't know what kind of training these dogs do. I do know that Jill Biden has gone on record saying that she's doing her best to get the dogs well adjusted because it is a very big change going from a home setting to a very public home setting. But instances like this are very important to see the whole picture of what's going on and not just focusing in on the actual bite incident. As a dog trainer, I get a lot of people coming up to me and saying that their dogs are aggressive. And this is very concerning because obviously it is a safety concern if your dog is exhibiting aggressive behaviors. But there's also this whole misconception about what aggression means. You'll often hear me talk about reactive dogs and dog reactivity. So this is just a reaction to an event. And this is how you should look at basically everything your dog does. I know we've talked about dogs being very black and white, very cause and effect. Dogs don't just randomly bite someone. There are things that lead up to this. And for the most part, there are definite warning signs that we can be aware of. The very first warning signs I want to address is just a change of home. So Major is from a shelter. So that in and of itself could have been a traumatic experience. I don't want to speak for that because all shelters are different it's wrong to assume that just because your dog came from a shelter he was severely abused and neglected but even the simple act of 
going from one family to a shelter environment with a bunch of other dogs to another family can be quite traumatic for dogs just because it's a sudden change that they had no say in. So it's possible that the idea of moving from the Delaware home to the White House was a much bigger adjustment than anyone could have anticipated for poor Major. Like I said, Champ, while this again would be a shocking transition, Champ has been to the White House before. This isn't his first time and he's also pretty old and as dogs get older, they typically tend to pick their battles a little bit more. So the sudden shift between a very private home to a very public home is something that can take months to get used to. And from what we know, the dogs came to the White House in January. It's currently March 8th. And that window of time is relatively very small in the grand scheme of things. So this dog is under a lot of stress to readjust. Additionally, the aggressive behaviors that have been described of Major exhibiting in the White House are not something that I would consider aggressive behaviors. Barking, jumping, and charging are all warning behaviors that dogs exhibit when they're feeling stressed and uncomfortable. Barking is a totally natural thing for a dog to do. In fact, we bred them for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to bark. And just because in the last hundred years we've changed our mind and we find that annoying, doesn't mean that we didn't breed them to do this thing for hundreds and hundreds of years. Jumping, again, a totally normal behavior. We do find it annoying, but it's something a dog naturally does, especially if you're not reinforcing how important all four on the floor is to your dog. Dogs jump for a variety of reasons. They love the smell of hands. Hands carry food. Hands carry smells of the outside world. Hands also give pets and scratches and attention. Dogs love faces. Faces, again, smell like food. They smell like the outside world. They give praise. They give attention. Dogs love jumping up to sniff your clothes because you smell like the outside world and they get attention. You're sensing a theme here. So jumping, while annoying, I don't consider an aggressive behavior. It is a problem behavior for sure. It's something that can be trained out of them, but it isn't necessarily an indication of aggression. And lastly, charging, I have a lot of questions about because it really depends on the situation and what's going on around them. Some people consider charging a dog suddenly running up to you, tail wagging, ready to play, looking for attention. Some people define charging as a dog advancing, charging against you as a way to push you back and get you away from them. Both are totally valid, both are behaviors that dogs exhibit, and both have a very important purpose. Ultimately, what these three things can be boiled down to is Major is trying to express himself. He's trying to make his opinions and his feelings known, but dogs don't speak English, and we don't necessarily always speak dog. So dogs try to explain to us how they're doing and how they're feeling the best way they can, and that's often in these particular behaviors. For example, barking, defensive barking in particular, dogs know if they bark, it has a very good chance of scaring away whatever is approaching them, whatever is making them uncomfortable. Lunging and charging, again, adds that distance. Oftentimes, dogs will run forward and then retreat. And that's just creating this distance between them and the thing that they don't want close to them. Finding the why of all of these behaviors not only helps you understand where your dog is coming from, but helps you address the actual situation that is causing these behaviors to occur. If we ignore the why of these behaviors, that's when things get very, very, very dangerous. So for example, some trainers will see a dog that they deem aggressive, and let's say that they're showing lunging and charging behaviors where they're running up to you so to get you to get farther away from them and they're retreating and they're running up to you and they're retreating because they want whoever this is far away from them. Some trainers, and this is a technique that I do not agree with whatsoever and I'll tell you why, will only take a look at the behavior of that charging. They'll use prong collars, they'll use 
shock collars, they'll use harsh punishment tactics, and they will essentially break the dog of this behavior by punishing them and making it painful, traumatizing, um, uncomfortable to perform the behavior of lunging and going forward. What this does is it teaches the dog that performing this behavior, which is a warning sign, will get them punished. Naturally, dogs want to avoid punishment, especially if it's painful and comfortable. So he's gonna stop exhibiting this behavior. So what happens when he can't exhibit those warning signs? That's when you get these, all of a sudden my dog bit somebody because you've been suppressing their warning signs, you've been suppressing their communication and they eventually just snap. And it seems very sudden, it seem, it's very scary for everybody involved when your dog just suddenly snaps. But this is often because we're either completely ignoring their warning signs they were giving them and we just didn't listen or it's because these warning signs, like barking, like growling, like advancing and retreating, were all suppressed so much that they no longer performed them. And now you have no communication of what your dog's going through, what your dog's thinking. So what could have led to this situation in the first place? We talked about moving and how stressful that can be, especially to a fairly fresh, fairly new to the family, rescue dog who came from a shelter which is a very traumatic place for a lot of dogs even if it's the best shelter in the world and everyone is treated very individually and everybody is loved individually you're leaving the situation that you knew suddenly and now you're around a bunch of other dogs and people and kind of a revolving door of dogs and people and again that can be very traumatic for some dogs you're then taking this dog who's only been in your home for maybe a year and a half two years you're taking them from one home that's very private, very personal, and taking them to a very public place where there's people going in and out, there's security detail, and the president is very stressed. You often see like before and after pictures, specifically I remember seeing before and after pictures of Obama before presidency and Obama after presidency. And yes, eight years passed, but people don't age that much in eight years naturally without a whole lot of stress. So just being in the White House itself is a very stressful place, a very stressful position. And dogs do pick up on the stress of their owners. They pick up on the stress of the people around them. They pick up on the hustle and bustle and all of that movement can make them very stressed. So essentially major is there's a whole lot of changes, there's a whole lot of stimuli, there's a whole lot going on. He was probably, in his little doggy brain, very stressed, having trouble adjusting, and trying his best to communicate in his doggy language that he was struggling. And it's very, very likely that they had a behaviorist or a trainer on site working on helping these dogs adjust. They might not have, I do not know. But whether you have the help of a trainer or not, putting a dog in that situation can be very, very, very difficult. And I think that's what we ended up learning here is whether or not his warning signs were being listened to, whether or not his emotional needs were being met, he ultimately snapped. We don't know how long that these dogs are going to be back home in Delaware. We don't know if they're eventually going to be brought back to the White House. We don't know the circumstances of how or if or when they're going to be brought back. But ultimately, taking it very, very slow and working on teaching the owners and the handlers de-escalation tactics, distraction tactics, and ways to allow Major to decompress are going to be very, very important for reincorporating him back into the White House family. If you're dealing with aggressive tendencies or reactivity with your own dog, it is very, very important to take a second and I would just make a list of what things trigger these reactions and see if you can kind of find a common thread. For example, if your dog is totally fine around other people, loves other people, loves going out in public, but if a man with a hat walks by, he absolutely freaks out. That's something to pay attention to. And things like that might not be so obvious from the beginning. So even just keeping a 
pen and paper around and each time he gives a reaction just making note of everything in his environment that could have possibly triggered it you're going to start to see those patterns and that's when you can start to decide what the trigger is and then go forward with how to desensitize him to that trigger now obviously dog bites are very very scary um, the severity and the condition of the bite and of the security member are not known to the public they were not included in the article but I do hope that whoever it was is healing well. I hope that the situation was a relatively minor incident um, because I have seen some pretty intense injuries from bites. And most importantly, I hope that the Biden dogs are readjusting back home, getting a little TLC feeling a little bit more relaxed and I hope that they will be introduced back into the White House with maybe the help of a behavior professional or a training professional just to give them a little extra support in making that adjustment a very positive one. If you have any questions, any comments, any opinions about this particular subject, please leave those down in the comments below as well as any other videos that you would like to see. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. I post every Training Tuesday and Feeding Friday, so you get a whole bunch of training behavior information as well as nutritional and feeding advice, which if you have a pet, this is going to be a great channel and a great resource for you. I hope you stick around. Until next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next video. Bye.